The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grand Pappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Oh, Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Reed McCoys. Hi, George. Hi, Bertie. Oh, shut up, please. Hello, everybody. How are you? Just drove by there saying no checkers tonight, Amos. We're going away on a little trip. On a trip? Uh, yeah, that's right. Be gone, maybe. Oh, a couple of days. Well, bye, folks. You wait, George. Ain't this kind of sudden? And you're leaving this time of night? Yeah, we'll be running along. Oh, wait a minute now, George. What's the rush? Where are you going anyways? We're, uh... Going upstate, Amos. Uh, what you might call an emergency. See you in a few days. Bye, everybody. Yeah, well, bye. 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 Well, this sure ain't like them, is it? It sure ain't. Last time they was getting ready for a trip, they was getting ready for eight months. And they didn't seem to want to talk about much, neither, did they? No. George, don't you think we should have told them? No, Flora. When you've got a relative like Cousin Naomi, this is something you've got to try and keep quiet. But I don't feel right about making such a mystery of it to the McCoys. Uh, don't worry about it, Flora. You just be thankful. Uncle Zach phoned us and told us she was heading this way. <laughs> Paul Revere didn't give no greater service. I still think it wouldn't have hurt to tell him. Will you please forget about it, Flora? Why, the McCoys would think it was cruel running away from a blood cousin. But if we just told them what she's like... How can you tell anybody what Cousin Naomi is like? Ain't nobody made up the right words yet. Grandpa, put that gun back. A thief ain't gonna knock. I'm going around here this time of night. Oh, I'm so sorry. I got you all up, didn't I? Well, these ain't our work clothes, if that's what you mean. <laughs> Is anything wrong, ma'am? I'll be all right in a minute. It was just the excitement of the train trip and the cab and... Those stairs outside were a little too much for me. <laughs> Won't you come and sit down for a minute? Oh, you're very kind, dear. Oh, oh my. I, I, I'm shaking all over. Say, we could give her a belt out of that jug of medicine we brought from West Virginia. That'd take the quivers out of her. No, no, no. I, I'll, I'll be all right in a moment. <laughs> Look, ma'am, uh, I, I don't mean to interrupt your suffering, but what, just what are you doing here? Well, I was next door at the McMichael's house, and it was dark. And I wondered, uh, as you're their neighbors, do you know where they went? Well, they just went on a trip tonight. Oh, no. Oh, this is terrible. Why, I'm their cousin Naomi. Naomi Vesper, from Indianapolis. <laughs> your cousins? <laughs> Well, happy to meet you. With George and Freud, the best friends we got in the whole world. Of all things. We're the McCoys. My name's Amos, and this is my grandson, Luke. Howdy. And that's Kate, Luke's wife. Pleased to meet you. The McCoys, of course. Why, they've written so much about you. How wonderful and warm-hearted you are. <laughs> there ain't nothing we wouldn't do for George and Flory. It never occurred to me that they wouldn't be home. They've written me so often asking me to visit them. Well, they're only going to be gone a couple of days, maybe less. It was sort of an emergency, I guess. <laughs> well, I'd better be finding a place to stay tonight. <laughs> You've been so kind. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You're going to stay right here tonight. Oh, you're very generous, but I couldn't impose. Oh, well, you wouldn't be imposing, Miss Vesper. 
Cousin Naomi. <laughs> Cousin Naomi? Oh, you make me feel like I'm one of the family. I, I, I just can't argue. Thank you so much. Hey, uh, Kate. <laughs> Kate, of course, I would like for to have Cousin Vespi stay here, too, but uh, what do you figure on sleeping her? Uh, well, Grandpa, you can go on in with little Luke, and she can have your room. Yeah, but Kate, don't you think it's best that she go to a motel where they, they sure to be a doctor on duty and, and they has uh, hot soup and such like? <laughs> Grandpa, she's best off right here. Look, lady, what's it going to be? The clock is still running. Oh, uh, she's staying here. You can bring her things on in. Right. And be careful of the little brown bag. It's full of my medicines. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'll uh, sign one of my traveler's checks. That is, if I can hold a pen. But my hands are shaking so. Oh, and now don't you bother. Grandpa will take care of it, and you can settle it up with him in the morning. Oh. All right, Grandpa? Yeah, but uh, shaky signature is still legal, you know. I'll show you your room. Well, I better get the cookie jar. <laughs> All right, come on in. It's uh, 7.45. Well, you better reset your watch, mister. It's way past midnight. That's fair. Seven dollars and forty-five cents. Fair? What'd you do, drive her all the way from Indianapolis? No, sir. A dollar forty-five of that is for waiting outside while she was in those three bars. But She said she was calling her cousins. Here you are, Grandpa. Hey, look, you know what the cab fare was out here? Seven dollars and forty-five cents. You'll get it back in the morning. I know, but it sure don't make for a good night's rest. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Morning, <laughs> oh, Grandpa. Well, I didn't want to have to run around looking for a fountain pen in her condition. She's very sweet, but she's not too well, poor thing. No, well, I'm not too well either. And I couldn't sleep. Grandpa, did you have to come in bed with me last night? No, I didn't. I could have slept on the roof. And I don't know what you're complaining about. It's churning around all night, sticking your elbow in my face, and it kicking me in the stomach. <laughs> Pancakes and bacon. Sure smell good. Grandpa, it's just for one more night at the most. And remember, she's George and Flory's cousin. They'd be mighty upset if we wasn't hospitable. All right, let's get the whole thing. I'll take my pancakes and bacon, though, now, Kate. They look ready. Yeah, me too. Now, wait a minute, you two. Are you forgetting we have a guest in the house? Well, we'll leave some for it. Good morning, everybody. Well, cousin Naomi, my, you look bright and shining this morning. Oh, I didn't think I did. I didn't sleep very well. Oh. Oh, who are these two little dears? Oh, I'm sorry. This is Luke's sister and brother. This oh. is Hattie. How do you do? And little Luke. Hi. Hello. Oh, you better run along to school. You'll be late. <laughs> Goodbye. Nice meeting you. See you later. Bye. 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 You want to sit yourself oh, down here? Yes, I will. Thank you. I'm so sorry you didn't sleep too well. Was anything wrong? Oh, of course not, dear. I'll make up for the sleep I lost after lunch when I take my nap on that nice soft couch in the living room. Oh, that was it. Your mattress was too hard. Oh, dear. Oh, I wouldn't have had you know for anything in the world. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Luke and I'll change with you. Our mattress is softer. <laughs> no, it ain't that much softer, sugar babe. I mean, it's a question whether it'd make any difference. <laughs> Sue? Well, I don't want to be a nuisance. <laughs> don't be silly. I I'll get you breakfast. Now, set this fountain pen down inside your plate in case you need it for something or other. Or, or, or to sign something. <laughs> but I can't think of anything I'd need it for right now. <laughs> See, your hands is nice and steady this morning, no shaking or nothing. Yes, I feel a little better, but things take time. Yeah, I'm beginning to see that. <laughs> this smells simply delicious. I just know they're going to give me the strength I need. Well, I hope so. There's plenty more when you finish those. Oh, Kate, you're so thoughtful. <laughs> 
on getting your strength back, but you're picking up a lot of speed, too. <laughs> Grandpa, I'll make some fresh just as soon as I finish letting out Cousin Naomi's dress. You better leave it out an extra inch. She ain't through but half a sandwich. <laughs> oh, Mr. McCoy, I can hardly wait till George and Flora come back so I can tell them how much fun you people are. Hmm. I can't wait either. I shine off the shoes you asked me to, Cousin Naomi. Oh, you are a good boy, little Luke. You've earned your quarter. Little Luke, you didn't ask for a quarter, did you? No. Of course he didn't. But when a boy works, he should have money. And I'll get you your quarter right now. <laughs> Where did I put my purse? You mean the one with the traveler's checks in it? <laughs> Don't worry. You can give it to him some other time. <gasps> that wouldn't be fair. Um... Kate, I wonder if you would mind, uh... Of course. And little Luke, just take a quarter out of the cookie jar. Are these all the dresses you meant? Oh, well, dear, I didn't mean so many. Although they all do need letting out at the seams. But I... Oh, I... I wouldn't feel right, Kate. Oh, that's all right. I'd be happy to do it. Thank you, Kate. And you too, Hassie. Oh. You're such a thoughtful girl. It's nothing, really. No, no charge at all. Well, I think I'll run along and take my nap so I won't bother you while you're working. Well, I brung it, Cousin Naomi. You brung what? I brung her cough medicine and her bottle of soda water. <laughs> they sure charge a lot at that drugstore. <laughs> You see, I played uh, $3.45 for them two little bitty old bottles. Why, that's highway robbery. I never paid more than $2.95 for it anywhere. You better grab it, Luke. You'll never get a better offer. See, I had to pay you all cash for it, too. I'm very glad you did. I don't approve of charging things. I'm going to take my nap. What's the matter, Grandpa? Daddy. Now, where is it? Where's what, Grandpa? You know what I'm talking about. Well, I haven't got the faintest idea. Me neither. I've been saving it for the first cold night. Now, where is it? What is it? Oh, it. Yes, it. What's it? Where is it? Grandpa, you said yourself it was cold, and she's kind of feebly, and you wouldn't want her to catch pneumonia or nothing. Oh, no. Oh, no what? Grandpa, she didn't have nothing warm. Well, how dashed you? How double dashed you? What dashed she? My brand new nightgown. She let that bestie woman wear it. Grandpa, she didn't have nothing warm to wear. I never had a chance to break it in. Well, this does it. Oh, oh. Now, hold on, Grandpa. Wait a minute. Now, wait, now, wait a minute. Grandpa. Now, Grandpa's right, because right now I want my nightie back again. Well, look, it's nighttime. Can't we wait and talk about this in the morning? And leave her sleeping my longies whilst I shiver my shorties? Never. Now, Grandpa, simmer down. I ain't going to simmer down. There ain't nothing going to make me simmer down. Why, that mealy mouth woman is the most aggravating female leech I ever seen in all my born days. <laughs> ever since she come a-whining into our lives, we ain't had a minute's peace. All right, go ahead. Insult her. Go ahead. Throw her out. Well, it's about time you was on my side. But if you do, George and Flory ain't never gonna speak to you again. And you know how that'll pain you. Kate McCoy, you got a twisty mind and a twisty tongue to match. But you ain't getting around me this time, because she's going out and I made up my mind to it. Grandpa, you can't throw her out in the cold. Full of a cough medicine, she won't know the difference. <laughs> I made up my mind and this is the way it's going to be. <laughs> Don't open it, Luke. It might be another cousin. George and Flora. Just in time, too. I got a lot to tell him. Now, wait a minute, Grandpa. Just a second, George. Now, Grandpa, it's all over and done with, and there ain't no point in saying anything. Naomi loves them, and they love her, and it'd make things a whole lot more pleasant if they was to feel that we like her, too. Well, Kate's right, Grandpa. There ain't nothing to be gained. Well, all right, just so long as she gets out of here. <laughs> Hi, Emerson. Hope I didn't get you up. We saw your light. George and Flory. 
Well, you're the most welcome sight I ever seen. George, old boy, I love every wrinkle in that pruny face. There's one thing I want to tell you, I never told you before. You're beautiful. He's sick. No, I ain't. Just so all fine, glad to see you. You too, Glory. Oh, welcome home. Uh, well, I'll go away more often. Hey, we a little present for you. Special made bonbons. Well, thank you. We got a special present for you, too. You get a present for us? Yeah. I really hate to complain, but it's getting late and I want to sleep. And... Cousin Neil. <laughs> George. There's your present. Was the lunch all right, Cousin Naomi? Oh, fine. Nothing wrong with it at all. I really like leftovers. Well, I'll say one thing. There ain't no more leftovers left over. Sorry about the lunch, Cousin Naomi. But I was ironing your dresses oh, at the same time. don't try to explain. It's all right. I understand. You, you mean well. <laughs> oh, I think I'll go and take my nap. <laughs> oh, did I tell you how nice the McCoys were to me when I took my nap? What they did? They would tiptoe all around the place and never make a sound. Uh, that, that woman! What are you doing? Well, I could burn down the house. If I can get rid of her that way, it'd be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa, I swear I've never seen you look so content and happy before. Oh, I ain't. I'm just like a honest am. Well, that ain't so, Grandpa. It's because you've done something real nice for your friends and you feel good about it. <laughs> no matter how you try to hide it, there's no more satisfying feeling than helping friends and, and knowing they appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Miss McCoy, you are a no-good do-gooder. <laughs> You and your kindness. You ruined my life. George, what's the matter with you? You too. <laughs> Understanding sympathetic people like you that cause all the trouble in the world. <laughs> Don't you dare call my wife understanding. You and your kindness. You're as bad as the rest of them. Uncle George, I ain't never heard you talk this way. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be shining shoes. <laughs> I smell a rat. One that drinks cough syrup. <laughs> what are you talking about, Grandpa? Amos, when my cousin knocked at your door, you should have done what any normal people would do. Throw her out in the street. <laughs> but you didn't. Oh, no. So I'm stuck with her for life. George, we thought she was a special relative. We just did it to help. Well, she told us that you loved her. Her? To put it mildly, she is the most... She, uh, she's, uh, I guess I can't put it mildly. Well, she's still your relative, and I'm going to send you a bill for every girl, girl cent we spent on her. Now, there was $7.45 for a camp fare, $3.45 for cough medicine, 25 cents for soap. Now, look, Amos, you're responsible for keeping her around these parts. Now she's going to clutch your hands in us. So it's up to you to help us to get rid of it. I'll do no such a thing. Amos, you seem to forget the favors I've done for you, like warning you, your tool's head went in fire. Uh, and what about the time I pulled you out of the mud flats, huh? And saved your life. Uh, you was being suctioned under. Well, a little thing like that ain't no call for me to save you from Cousin Naomi. <laughs> what about the time I saved you from that mad bull, huh? When he had you up against the fence and was getting ready to gory and... Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do, Amos. 
the doctor says that Flora don't dare lift a finger for months. The big question is, who's going to take care of things around here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the cooking, the scrubbing, the cleaning. <laughs> There's a lot of heavy work to be done around here. Yeah, uh, and I don't know who is going to do it. Well, I got an ID. Oh, Cousin Naomi. <laughs> hey, Cousin Naomi. Uh, yeah, uh, the way she talked about you, I say she'd do anything for you. But she's too sickly. She couldn't stand up under all that work. Well, at least she'd be a great help until she collapses. <laughs> hear anything, Amos? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on in there, George. And I think it's in the right direction, too. <laughs> Oh, how many times have I got to tell you? A thief ain't gonna knock. I paid you once. Look, I'm sorry, but I ran out of gas in front of your house, and I got a passenger. What are we supposed to do? Well, I was wondering if I could use your phone, you know, to call the garage. Uh-oh, they're closed now. Well, wait, I'll tell you what you do. Why don't you leave your cab here and borrow your car and bring it back in the morning? Here, here's the key. Oh, no. Somebody but a McCoy drives that car. <laughs> Grandpa, did you hear that cough? Here's the key. I just made you an honorary McCoy. 